Yes, class. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. All right. So LC oscillations we had completed. So we won't be solving questions on LC oscillation because that's not a part of your syllabus. So briefly, we have already discussed it. We have discussed all the steps in it, and rest of the things also in which are present and which are essential for your. Uh, alternating current we have already discussed it now the last topic that is left is transformers so transformers principle or basic things regarding transformer that also you have already done so transformers is not a tough topic transformers is a very easy topic and even the formulas are very easy that you have under transformers so this we will do then we'll do the revision of this complete chapter so that you are prepared for the test remember you have your test on thursday so test we'll be having it fine now see regarding transformers so transformers are what these are electrical devices they have one function which can be dealt in two manner first see the only function of a transformer is to change the voltage it can change the voltage in any manner it can change the voltage either from it can convert the low voltage into high voltage or high voltage into low voltage that is what is the function and the work of a transformer fine so this is what we'll study and based on this we will see what are the types of transformers present so basic thing okay 16th october and what's the syllabus let me know the syllabus as well full part 1 so em waves are included or they are excluded em waves then chapter after this electromagnetic waves Okay, so just let me know, Akipa, whether EM waves is included or not. Fine, whatever is the case, your exams are starting late. Just give me two minutes and wait for two minutes.
Yes, plus. So, uh, yes, transformers, no, we were discussing. Uh, yes, I was talking to Akifa. Uh, Akifa, so most probably whatever, whenever you are ex your exam is starting on 16th. So a lot of time you have. By the time, I think more chapters will be covered. So I think your syllabus will be done. Others also let me know because most of the students are having their half yearly exams from mid of September as well or end of September. So others also, as you people keep on getting your schedule, please let me know so that revision classes can be done according to it. These chapters are done recently and we'll be having, we'll revise this lesson also today. But regarding the earlier lessons that we have done, especially lessons of electrostatics potential and all those lessons for that especially. Now transformers. So transformers are what? Transformers. These are electrical devices. These are electrical devices that convert high voltage to low voltage or vice versa, vice versa means from low to high also, both are possible. Either it can convert high voltage to low voltage or low voltage to high voltage, any of these is possible. Now, regarding the transformers, you have to remember two types of transformers are present, either high to low or low to high. So if you have high voltage to low, this means essentially what is happening to the input voltage. Input voltage is decreasing from high to low. So it means that your input voltage is decreasing. So this shows that there's a decrement in the input voltage. So input voltage decreases. These types of transformers, which push the voltage down, decrease the voltage from high to low down. So these are from the term only you can remember. These are known as step down transformers. Step down transformers. Fine. Contrary to this fact, now you can easily predict the other one. If the voltage is converted from a low voltage is converted into a high voltage. So if it is low voltage to high, or essentially what is happening, a very small lower voltage is increasing. It is moving up. The value is gradually increasing, moving from a lower scale to an upper scale. So here, what is happening to the input voltage? Input voltage increases over here. Essentially, the voltage was different. Now the voltage is again different. So we call this as what? Step up transformer, something that is going up. And what is that something? Voltage. Voltage is essentially that the thing that is going up. So here what we'll say, this is step up transformer. This is a step up transformer. Fine, so it's easy to remember this. Now the principle is easier than the types of voltage, uh, transformers that we have. We have studied a topic, induction. Remember in electromagnetic induction, the chapter was, the major part of chapter was induction also that we have studied. So the inductions were also of two types. First induction that we had studied, studied was self-induction. Second induction was mutual induction. In case of self-induction, what had happened? In case of self-induction, for example, if you have a coil with you. So in this coil, current will change, associated magnetic flux will change. And there you'll have induced EMF within this coil only. That is known as what? This is known as 
this is known as what? This is known as self-induction. Induction is occurring within the same coil. Fine. Then we had seen the concept of mutual induction. So in mutual induction, what happened? In mutual induction, flux, current got changed in one coil, flux got changed in that coil, but the EMF got induced into the other coil. That was your mutual induction. Yes, I hope you people are able to remember this induction topic. We have done it recently. So the principle of this transformer principle involves mutual induction. So you can write whatever you have studied in mutual induction, whatever is the definition of mutual induction that you can add into the principle of uh, transformers. So this is principle is simply mutual induction. Principle is what mutual induction that current will in the basically here you don't have two coils separately two circular coils you do not have you have primary coil and secondary coil I'll tell you in the construction see in the construction what happens you have a primary coil a soft iron core is there on one end of it coil is tied up that we call as the primary coil which can have any number of turns more than a single turn three turn four turn n number of turns are possible in that primary coil and how is a coil made normal insulated copper wires which are present so that's how your primary coils are constructed then you have secondary coils The other coil, two coils are there, no, in case of mutual induction. So this is also normal copper, insulated copper windings that are present. Fine, primary coil is there, secondary coil is there. And how to connect these two? Because you cannot hold it in machines, these are used. So mainly in machines, we use them. So there has to be some material on which this is stuck. So basically, you have soft iron core. And most of the places you have seen that it's the soft iron core because of the properties of retentivity, coercivity. I think in chapter number fifth, magnetism and matter we have seen. Uh, one topic was left class in magnetism and matter. Earth magnetism. Fine. So that we'll uh, do it in the next class. That topic was left. So I initially thought that when we'll revise the chapter, then we'll do, but I think your half year lease will start. So it's better that we revise it. And then gradually, gradually now we'll be dividing the portions and revision will also begin because book one is almost towards the end. I think only EM waves is left and EM waves is a very easy chapter. The numerical part is very less, very less. The rest of the things are to be learned by you people, frequency, wavelength that you have to learn. And Sometimes it's difficult. The chapter is very easy. The chapter total, the complete chapter is very easy. Weightage is also very less. But in remembering the frequency and wavelength, it, bec it becomes monotonous to remember. And it is difficult to remember the values of frequencies. More or less, majorly, the comparison is asked to compare all the different wavelengths. That is usually asked to compare it. And those types of questions are then easy if the comparisons are asked. But if you have to specify a wavelength, that can be asked because it is mentioned in your NCR too. So in your CBSE board exam, put it. And So you have to remember that complete thing. So that is also a very small chapter. So I'll send you that material also. Please remember and learn that. Table I had sent you, which had the differences between diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic. Learn that table also because that is important. You have to learn all the points. Direct question can also be asked to differentiate. So you can, whichever points you remember, you can mention it on your own. And also it can happen or a specific point can be mentioned. Differentiate diamagnetic and paramagnetic substance on the basis of susceptibility like this that can also be mentioned. So please remember that if you will learn it and I think it will be better for all of you because at the last moment, most of the students leave it because it becomes difficult to learn it at the last moment. Fine. So construction, primary coil, secondary coil, these are held on an insulating so, uh, normal soft iron core that you have. 
Now the major construction, how these two wires are constructed, how primary coil is arranged, how secondary coil is arranged. So two types of arrangements that are there. First one is the core type. In the core type, what do you have? There's a rectangular concentric block, right? Which has inner walls also, outer wall also. This is your soft iron core. Here, what happens? The primary coil. This is wrapped on one end. This is what? This is your primary coil. One extreme end, fine. And your secondary coil, which is present, it is wrapped or wounded on a separate bar, on the separate stand. Not the, exactly the stand, the edge of the soft iron bar. Primary and secondary both are separated, you can see. This is secondary. Fine. Then you have, so this is one type of arrangement. The second type of arrangement that you have is the shell type. Second arrangement that you have is the shell type. So this is your rectangular block. In shell type, it becomes difficult to separate the primary and secondary coil. So primary and secondary coils are not separated. So this is known as a shell type. Here you will be having a primary coil. Now the primary coil is suppose, let's say here, this is the primary coil. Now secondary will also be wound into this one only. This is the secondary coil. So coils, you know, coils in case of electromagnetic induction, also you have studied Faradic coils, which are present normal coils in the form of solenoid that we have, that is also a Faradic coil only. So that phenomena, all the properties remain the same. Just the difference that comes into action is that on a piece of iron block, soft iron core, these are wrapped. So primary is there, secondary. If they are separated, that is core type. If they are moving together or if they are overlapped with each other, that is known as the shell type. Fine. So I think note it till here, then I'll explain you the working of it. The working is very easy. Formulas are also easy. I think you'll be able to remember this within the class itself. Fine. So note it down. Then we'll discuss this. Also remember, core type is used usually in the modern times modern day, whatever devices and instruments you have nowadays, that is, you have the core type in more usage. Otherwise, your radio, televisions, those type, the transformers that are inserted into them, those are your shell type transformers. Fine, so noted from here.
now see working so working understanding of working is easier because you know mutual induction so everything will be the same over here it's just that instead of coil one and coil two you have to remember primary and secondary so what happens i'll keep on uh, i'll keep on writing also and i'll explain that so what happens is that see current will flow th through the primary first primary name is given because it is the first one through which the coil current passes so what happens current flows through the primary coil and then magnetic flux gets induced or alters there's a change in the magnetic flux due to flow of current there's a change in the magnetic flux that occurs and that passes through the secondary this is what is the basic one. so i'll write down as the c as the alternating current as the alternating current flows through first the primary from here or from here so as the alternating current flows uh, through the primary it generates an alternating magnetic flux it generates alternating magnetic flux because we are referring not to the normal direct current that we have now we are referring to the alternating current that's why we are focusing on the alternating magnetic flux over here it's just representing that the magnetic flux has been generated due to the alternating current so that's why alternating magnetic flux has been mentioned and this in the this occurs here in the core which passes through the secondary this passes through the second now what happens always a change in magnetic flux induces is an emf that we have started already so this similarly here also this change in flux it will set up an induced emf in the second coil so this changing flux sets up and induced current and this sets up an induced current no I'm sorry not induced current induced emf current to pehle se hai now emf has been induced because of it. so since changing flux sets up an induced emf in the secondary there is a self induced emf in the primary because here also the changes are in this is mutual induction reciprocation can also occur so if you are just talking about what happens in the primary that you will say that is self induction but when you talk about primary and secondary both in reference with each other then you say it is mutual induction so here what happens in case of the primary coil in case of the primary coil it's just the self induced has been said here is a self induced emf set up in the this is the work now according to faraday's law if you sum up it whatever is the statement that i have written if you sum this up basically emf that has been changed through the primary this will be equal to what is the formula e is equal to minus n d phi over dt this is the main formula so here also that the potential of the emf that has been generated or that is getting generated this will be due to due to what this will be the 
induced GMF in the primary coil. If you see, this will be the induced GMF in the primary coil. And then you have induced GMF in the secondary coil. So here what will happen? You will just name it as primary or secondary. In certain books, you will find it as one or two also. So one means primary, two means secondary. So that is up to you. Whichever symbol you wish, you can write it. Now, EP, we will use C E is equal to minus N D phi over DT. I am writing EP. So I will specify this becomes minus N P D phi over DT. What is meant by this? EP is what? This is the induced EMS in the primary. And what is NP? NP is the number of turns that are present in the primary coil. That can be anything. It can be a single turn that is present. It can be multiple number of turns that are present. And it has no limit. Fine, there are no limits to it. So this is number of turns in primary coil. Similarly, for the secondary coil also, you will just mention it specifically for the secondary coil. That ES, this will become minus NS D phi over DT. See, flux is the thing that is common in between them because it is occurring, the change is occurring within the soft iron coil. So ES is what? ES is induced EMF in the second. Whereas NS is what? NS is number of turns in the second. Now, if you use these two equations, you will directly get a relationship between number of turns for both the primary and secondary as well as the uh, induced GMF for the primary and secondary. So this will be what? This will be simply ES divided by EB will be equal to NS divided by NP. This is the first form. Easy. This much you have to remember. There is no even this is not even a derivation. The statement that I wrote above, no, that flux is present because of which we are having. I think that is also nobody is going to ask you directly. This formula will be used because there is no such derivation for it. It's based on the fact that it is proportional to number of turns, or this is proportional inversely proportional to current, directly proportional to power, like all these things. You have to relate it to it. So you can even shift it, swap all the numerator and denominator. So it can also be written as EP by ES is equal to NP by NS. Or you can write the way I have written. ES by EP is equal to NS by NP. How to remember the formula? Ratios in case of number of turns and EMF, both will be the same. In the sense, whatever will come in the numerator, that will be for both for both of it. For example, if it is secondary in the numerator, for voltage, then it will be secondary for the number of turns in the second part also. Fine. If it is primary for the induced EMF in the denominator on the left hand side, then it will be primary only for the denominator of the number of turns on the right hand side. Fine. So this you just you have to keep in mind whether it can be you can place NP and EP above, you can place ESNS above. Both are valid. Now regarding the current. So obviously, you know one thing, current is inversely proportional to the voltage that is present. So one relation, a complete relation that you have to remember over here is P by ES is equal to NP by NS. This is equal to IS divided by IP. This is the reciprocal of it. IS divided by IP. Got it. You won't write it directly. It will be what? It will be reciprocal of the current. Now, how can you get it or how can you relate to, to it? Why is the current reciprocal? See, this is usually written with the help of power. Power's formula that also we'll discuss. But how to remember the formula? Potential means E induced EMF and number of terms. These will be same. Same in the sense if P is above, so P will above, be above for both of it. If S is above, then S will be above for both of it. But current is reciprocal. If NP is there, so the on contrary to it or just lateral to it, it will be 
I S, just the opposite. Thing. So this you can remember. I think this is not difficult to remember. So if I remember, for current, ke liye it's opposite, and for number of turns and EMF, it is exactly the same. So this formula you have to remember, and um, apart from this power, you have to remember. The output power and input power you have to remember. So for output power. Or let's do input power. Power can be written from this formula. P is equal to V I. So this power input will become E P I P, and power output will become E S I S. Like this, fine. Then you have a term known as efficiency. Efficiency, I think, if some of you remember, at least I think. Uh, Akifa, you must be remembering it. Remember, we did it in thermodynamics as well, where we had the coefficient of performance also that was beta, and then coefficient of you had the efficiency, efficiency of the refrigerator, efficiency of the car not engine. So I hope you people are able to remember this somewhat. You must have studied somewhere. So this is what efficiency means. How efficient is your machine? So transformer is a machine only, right? It's a device transformer. You must have heard in your normal life, daily life also. So this is what if you take out the ratio, this is power output divided by power input multiplied by. This is what this is efficiency. This is efficiency, fine. You will write this the efficiency of real transformer or efficiency of a transformer. Now, when your you can say a machine is hundred percent efficient. Can only say that a machine is hundred percent efficient when the input power is equal to output power. So that's a very ideal situation. Obviously, there will be heat losses. I uh, I sent you something on WhatsApp yesterday. The other batch had this topic done, so I, I, that's why I had sent it yesterday. You people can refer to the same thing. Heat losses in case of transformers uh, and uses of transformers. Two tables I think I have sent. Not tables, two paras are there. Please have a look on it. And it's better if you can copy it in your notebook and registers wherever you're making them. So for efficiency to be hundred percent, power input is equal to power output. Means no energy losses are present. Fine. So noted from uh, note down this part. Any doubts? Ask me. Uh, let's practice certain numericals on this. And numericals are very easy. Direct. One thing will be unknown to you. Rest of the things will be given. From these, you have to find out. From the working, you have to write it down. Right. No doubt.
Uh, C class, this transformation ratio is written now over here. Transformation ratio basically means NS divided by NP. Sometimes NS divided by NP, this ratio, number of turns, ratio of number of turns of the secondary to the number of turns of the primary. This is also written as transformation ratio. Fine, so use this. Now try these questions. These questions are very easy. The question looks lengthier, but there are five parts, so every part is easy. Just try it once yourself. Wherever you see input, term that means primary as you will keep on getting the answer send me in the chat box See, Fatma, NS by NP is 100. And number of turns in the primary has already been given. You have to find number of turns in secondary.
Yes, now your answer is correct. Hamza is also right. Atif and Sara. Yes, Sarah, second part is right and Krishna and Akifa, first part is correct. Try the second part also, all of you, current in the primary. Uh, yes, sir, right. Two more minutes class and we'll discuss. So please try to solve all these. At least till the third part, try. Hamza, Fatima, Atif Krishna, second part is right. Sara, Kulsum, third part is also. Let's discuss it. Mm -hmm. Atif and Akif, right. So I think more or less you people have done it correctly. So it says what it says, the primary coil of an ideal step up transformer has 100 turns. Fine, and the transformation ratio that is given is 100. Input voltage is provided as 220 volt. Input voltage means what? Voltage in the primary. Wherever input is given, it always refers to the primary. And then you have 1100 watt is what? 
it's the power input power you have to find the number of turns see number of turns can be calculated transformation ratio means what transformation ratio simply means that you have the uh, ratio of the number of turns in the secondary to the number of turns primary which is given as 100 primary is given as 100 so ns will be what from here no sara no not fourth one not fourth one see number of turns in the secondary so for the number of turns in the secondary we have to write see ns divided by np this is given to us as what ns divided by np is given as 100 and np is already given as 100 so in the first part what do we have np will directly be equal to np will directly be equal to uh yes Eba, first part uh 10 000, yeah, right 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 so ns from here this will be directly equal to what ns will be 100 multiplied by 100 mm -hmm. which you can write it as 10 to the power 4 right. turns so these are the turns in the second row. Oh, this is the answer for the third part no yes right now second part says what second part says current in the primary Power is given to you, input power and input voltage is given to you. From there, you can carry, calculate the current. EP is given as 220 volt and input power is given what? Input power is 1100, no? Input power was 1100 watt. So IP will be power input divided by EP. This is 1100 divided by 220. This will be 10 by 2, so that is 5. five. Third part was asking the voltage in the secondary. So voltage in the secondary can be calculated by any formula. See, you have NS by NP. This is equal to ES by EP. Now only ES is unknown, rest of the things are known. So ES will be equal to what? NS by NP into EP. NS by NP is? 100 transformation ratio and uh, EP this is given as 220. So ES will be written as 22, this 220 and then these two zero, this much of voltage. Uh, yes, now your answer is right, sir. Uh, Hamza, 22,000 volts. Yes, answer for the third part. And what was the next part? Current in the secondary, no? Current in the secondary. Now, current in the secondary can also be calculated. Rest of the things are known to you. You can even calculate it. Uh, yes, Krishna, right answer. For the answer for the, this is the fourth part, right? So for the fourth part, see, NS by NP is given to you. For current, it will be opposite, reciprocal, IP by IS. So IS we need, IS will be equal to... IP multiplied by, see from here, IS is unknown to us. No, IP we have calculated, that was 5 amperes. So IS will be equal to IP multiplied by NP by NS. Now IP is what? IP is 5 amperes. NP by NS is 1 by 100. I think, Sarah, you must have done NS by NP over here. And you must have written it as 100. So this is 1 by 100, which gives you 0 0.05 amperes. Then the last part is what? Last part is power, no? Power in the secondary. So power in the secondary, you can calculate in any manner. Power in, power in the secondary means output power, which is equal to ES, IS. ES was what? Uh, current in the second uh, yes yes right answer current uh, voltage in the secondary came out to be what uh 22000 and current in the secondary is right now only 5 by 100 so this is 1100 watts or you can even directly say see efficiency is not mentioned to you. So it means all the input power will be equal to the output power direct. Just note down the solution. Then we'll do one more question.
exactly what does this question say so i think only atif has answered in the first part yes atif your answer is right power i hope you are trying try to calculate the power using resistance c class the question that is given is a transformer of 100% efficiency has 200 turns in the primary so number of turns in the primary coil is 200 efficiency is given as 100% number of turns in the secondary is given as 40000 Right. Number of turns in primary is two hundred. Number of turns in secondary is forty thousand. It is connected to a two twenty volt AC mains, and the secondary feeds to a resistance hundred resistance. It means voltage in the primary is what two twenty volt. Because now secondary feels a resistance. Resistance in the secondary coil is hundred resistance. Fine, hundred resistance means what? Whenever this way is written, no hundred resistance. It always means kilo ohm. When nothing is mentioned, no, in the unit it's given feeds to a hundred resistance, two hundred resistance. So it simply means hundred kilo ohm. Fine. And it says calculate the output potential difference per turn and the power delivered to the load. So they are two separate parts. This much information I think was required by us. Now, potential difference per unit turn. This means for the secondary, you know, this will be E P E S divided by N S. We have to actually find. E S divided by N S. We have to find this. So see, N P is given. N S ratio we need to calculate. E P is also given. See, E S by E P will be equal to N S by N P. Right, class. From here, E two will be what? Your E two, which is E secondary. This will be what? E secondary because we do not have rest of that. All the three three things are over here present. We are just unaware of the E S. So this becomes N S by N P. That transformation ratio multiplied by the what? E P. So N S is forty thousand by two hundred into two. Zero zero gets cancelled to eleven hundred. This becomes four four and three zeros. No, one two three forty four into these three zeros. This much of volt. This is now the power. Ah, uh, in terms of yes, good. Both the answers here. Return it absolutely correctly. So this is the voltage and voltage per unit number of turns we have to find. No, so E S by N S will be what four four zero zero zero, and this was given as forty thousand. So how much is there? One point one volt per turn. This is your Answer for the first part. For second part, you have to require resistance. You need to use resistance. Why power is equal to V square divided by R? Remember. So here power is asked in what? Power is asked in the power delivered to the load means power in the secondary. So power in the secondary will be or power output will be what? E S whole square divided by R S. So E S was what forty four thousand whole square divided by resistance was given as how much one thousand no no ten hundred kilo ohms so that is ten to the power five no ten hundred uh, and into ten to the power three yes this much so once you solve so the answer that you will get once you solve this answer that you will get will be Exactly what you are getting at the one nine three six zero, or you can even write it in terms of kilowatts nineteen point three six kilo. This is answer. Fine, note it down. Uh, some time is left. Uh, we'll do one more, one not question from transformer. I think transformer. This is enough from the previous topic. 
One or two questions at least.
ठीक ला सो ग्राफ इज गिवन टू यू आर एम एस वैल्यू यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट सो आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट दैट वी हैड डन इनिशियली सो दिस इज बेस्ड ग्राफिकली बेस्ड ऑन अ ग्राफ सो ट्राई इट वंस योर सेल्फ See what's the answer you're getting after two minutes. I'll discuss it with you. let's discuss it here we'll go with the normal method of rms value by the definition of rms that we have what's the definition or what's the full form of rms root mean square so in case of rms value in the initial also when we discussed and when we derived the formula for rms value and uh, erms value what did we study we never go by root mean square do the formula do the full form of this rms is root mean square but we never go by this root mean square what was the first step that i told you yes class root mean square in root mean square calculation of root mean square do we calculate the root first See, we go by this method: first square, then mean, then root. Though the for the though the short form is not SMR, it's RMS. Fine, but we take out the square first, then the mean value, then the value of the root. Then we just put it under root. So here also we'll be doing the same thing. Now see, this is what this will give you: the first value of i. I one from here, you can see this is two amperes. This is the value of I two, second value of current, which is given as minus two amperes. So this is minus two amperes, and the third current is this I three. No more graphs are given, so we'll stop here. Now, from the graph, the anything that was useful for us was just this I one, I two, I three. Nothing is now useful for us left from the graph. Now you just have I one, I two, I three, and you know you have to calculate R M S value. So first, we'll take out the square. C class from here. It is I. R M S first square. So you will write I one square. You have to choose I two square and you have to write I three square. So square done. Now mean. If three things are given to you, you have to calculate the mean value. How do you calculate the mean value? You add it directly and divide it by the number that is present. So total number that you have here is three. I one, I two, I three. Three things are present. So here you will divide, add all these, and divide it by three. Mean done. 
mean value of not i1, i2, i3. We are calculating the mean value of i1 square, i2 square, and i3 square because square squaring was the first step. Last step is putting under root. This is what. This is the step. Now i1 square this becomes two square plus this becomes minus two whole square plus this becomes again two square divided by three under root. So this is what twelve. Twelve divided by three. Four under root four two amperes. You will get it as two amperes. This is under root four, which will give you two amperes. So IRMS will come out to be two amperes. Fine, just note down this when you are done. Stop. I'll stop the class. Just text me done. If you have any doubts, any queries, ask me. You have your test day after tomorrow. We'll either we'll start with electromagnetic waves or we'll do revision of electrostatics. But I think revision will be better if I tell you the portion. So most probably we'll start with EM waves. And as you people will be get, uh, getting your portions from the syllabus for your half year days, please keep on updating me. If it's possible, text me like some of the students of your batch only they have done. They have texted me on WhatsApp, whatever was your course, or otherwise mention me it in the class as you will keep on getting it. Because then revision will be done together. No, obviously, every student will be having different half yearly. Every school will be giving its own half yearly. Fine. So ultimately, board exam is there, the main target. So before that, we have to do revision. So definitely, we won't do revision altogether because it's not possible and we have to keep on moving further also with the syllabus so revision will be dealt in the within the class duration itself but the topics that i'll tell you you have to at least revise and come because i'll be asking you find this method only or revision will be done Sarah, Krishna, Fatma. Apart from these three, as you keep, people keep on completing it, to text me. Then I'll stop the class. Then. And as those who have completed, you people can leave. Thank you, teacher.